Bruce Wayne is one of the most infamous billionaire playboys in comics, and a key part of his character is that he is single and alone, which gives him his brooding and dark image. Yes, he has dated many women, but none of them truly understood him and his dark nature, so they never ended up together in the end. But there have been a few times when Bruce Wayne has been engaged and even married such as with Andrea Beaumont in the film Batman Mask of the Phantasm, which was the first real DC animated movie ever made, that also set the standard for the current level of DC animated films, and if you haven't seen it, I fully recommend it. It's a film about Bruce's early days as Batman, even going so far as to explain why he dressed up as a bat in the first place. I had the edge. I could feel it. There was only one thing wrong. They weren't afraid of me. I've got to strike fear in them from the start. And it also features one of his greatest loves, Andrea Beaumont, who almost made him not want to be Batman. It went so far that the two even became engaged. I'm no good at this. Here, you'll get the idea. <gasps> and it may have been the case that he would have decided not to be Batman at all, but Andrea unfortunately called off the engagement at the last minute, as she had to leave town with her father to escape from the mob. Left with dad. Too young. Need time. Forget about me. Years later, she did return to Gotham City, but circumstances being what they were, with who she had become and who Bruce Wayne had become as Batman, they were unable to get back together. But aside from Andrea Beaumont, Batman has been close to many other women, and there are two occasions when he did actually get married. The first was in the Golden Age of Comics, when Bruce Wayne married Catwoman in an alternate universe, and the story was retold and adapted in the TV series Batman the Brave and the Bold. It was in the second season episode, Knights of Tomorrow. In the story, the two retire from life as Batman and Catwoman and settle down together, marry and have a child. After all, even crime fighters need love. In the show Batman the Brave and Beyond, that child is Damian Wayne. However, in the original Golden Age comics, the child was actually Helena Wayne. In the show, Batman does still protect Gotham, but since Bruce Wayne has retired, Dick Grayson has taken up the mantle and become the Cape Crusader. And so the mantle of Batman was passed, and justice endured. Batman endured. As for Damian Wayne, in this version he is a lot less angry than his new 52 counterpart and a lot less interested in the superhero lifestyle. I don't know if I can live up to the Batman legacy, Dick. I, I don't know if I want to. If I mess up, people get hurt. But unfortunately, when his parents are killed, he must don the Robin costume to get justice for their murder, much as his father had to become Batman to get justice for his parents' killer. Some things are just destined to happen. For some people, tragedy is inevitable. But tragedy made Bruce Wayne the man he was. And then years later, Damian Wayne does take up the mantle and become Batman himself. Ready to pound some criminal scum, Robin? Holy hymns of justice, Dad. I mean, Batman. Let's go get him. The other time Bruce Wayne was married was in Batman the Animated Series. It was in the fourth season episode, Chemistry. The story involved Bruce Wayne falling in love with a beautiful woman named Susan, and just as with the other two times he fell in love, his pain at the loss of his parents becomes less. Everything has changed for me these last few weeks. The pain of my parents' deaths, it's still there, but it seems smaller. And this allows him to retire from being Batman. I'm not going to be Batman anymore. And after his retirement, he intends to leave all of his tech and his Batcave to Nightwing, the Tim Drake version of Robin, and Batgirl. I've always assumed that sooner or later the three of you would get all this. Well, it's going to be sooner. Though even after Bruce Wayne is married, Nightwing still doesn't think he'll truly ever give up his cape and cowl. I give it a month. You don't think the marriage will last? Not that. I'm saying he'll have the costume on again in a month. Unfortunately for Bruce Wayne, the marriage doesn't last long enough to find out if he really will stay retired, as it is revealed that Poison Ivy has grown several human-like companions from plants, and that Susan is one of them. Poison Ivy has created these plant people so that they can seduce wealthy men and women, marry them, and then kill them, so that Poison Ivy gets control of their money and their businesses through controlling the plant people. Luckily for Bruce Wayne though, Robin and Batgirl have figured this out, and they appear just in time to save him from his plant person wife and from Poison Ivy's evil plan. Eat trichlor ethane, broccoli boy. And those are the times when Bruce Wayne got married. 
Personally, I think the Catwoman version is the most likely to come true. The only two women Batman would ever realistically marry and settle down with are either Talia al Ghul or Selina Kyle, who is of course Catwoman. But since Talia al Ghul is a murderer and also the second in command, and in some cases leader of the League of Assassins, who are also referred to as the League of Shadows, Bruce Wayne is never going to be able to marry her, even if she is the mother of his son Damian Wayne. Me. And your son. Son. But Catwoman is not a murderer, and the two have so much in common it's ridiculous, such as dressing up in dark costumes and lurking in the shadows of Gotham City, and she is the only one that I can see Batman realistically marrying. Though of course she is a thief, so this would have to be sorted out, but since he's a billionaire, she wouldn't need the money, and if it's the thrill she wants, then surely fighting crime would satisfy that urge for the thrill of the chase. But who do you think Batman should marry? Catwoman or Talia al Ghul? Or someone else entirely? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and um, I'd just like to give a quick thank you to those of you who have made this video possible by donating to the Needlemouse Productions Patreon page. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that allows fans to donate to creators in exchange for rewards. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.